Greetings and salutations. Welcome to another episode of 365 Days of Gaming. Appreciate you taking our time to check out this video. Like, comment, share, subscribe. All those things are greatly appreciated. Now, we've talked about X-Men before. We're going to talk about X-Men probably a dozen times because there's a lot of X-Men games involved in my gaming experience. So I want to talk about X-Men today. We're going to talk about one of my favorite versions of X-Men, X-Men Legend. All right, so X-Men Legends is the start of the Ultimate Alliance type games. These were a series of four player beat em up games that allowed you to level up, pick your favorite heroes, you got equipment, they had different outfits that you can unlock. Like, this was a great style of games. And I know they tried to do it on the Switch with Ultimate Alliance 3. I wish they would have made that a multi platform release because I felt like, I don't know, just something just didn't feel completely right about it. But let's talk about the original, right? So this is start of this game is based on the uh, fight between the Brotherhood of Mutants and the X-Men, right? So nothing too complicated. They're trying to recruit mutants to the Brotherhood. We're trying to recruit people to the X-Men. And you start off by seeing them go rescue Magma. We just figured out she's got powers and they're doing all the humans are awful and they're trying to arrest all the mutants. Gameplay is simple, straightforward. You got a light attack, strong attack. And then you have your powers. And this is where the game starts to shine a lot because as you unlock more characters, you start to be able to combine different abilities together. They'll, you know, call them different types of combos whenever you use them. And you get to, you know, level up your favorite X-Men. And then you add to the fact that you can have up to four players and it's just too much fun. Like we had our set teams when we would play. So a lot of times it would be me, Steven and Ronnie. And Ronnie's gotta have Iceman every time. Shout out to Iceman. And then Steven, if Colossus is available, he's gotta play Colossus. Um, I usually play with like Cyclops or Storm, uh, but any character in the game is, is viable. That was the other cool thing about it. They made every single character in the game viable, whether you're playing with Jean Grey, you're playing with Rogue, you play with Beast, Nightcrawler. Um, there's a few other ones I can't remember just cause I wasn't able to get far enough in the game. But there's a bunch of different characters you get to play with. And that's why this game is so good, because you get to do use all these different X-Men. And as always, whenever there's a squabble between the Brotherhood and the X-Men, at some point, members from the Brotherhood will be on your team. So, you know, got to get that to happen at, you know, sometime towards the end of the game, as always. And then this, like I said, this jumped off the franchise to where we got Legends 2, we got Ultimate Alliance 1 and 2, which will probably all get their own videos. And this is one of the games that we played on PlayStation, so you had to have the multi-tap, which was a great invention. Because by default, PlayStation 2 only could use two players, right? But you plug the multi-tap in, you got four extra slots, and all of a sudden, these games where you can have a couple of people, now you got four people. And I don't know about you, but nothing makes beat em up style games more fun than having four people. And it wasn't like the games themselves are bad unless you have four people. Because as you can see from the video, I'm playing by myself. The game is still fun. Still is a uh, great time by yourself. You don't need people, but people always makes it better. You're going to see a lot of Logan action, a lot of Cyclops. I've grown on to enjoy Cyclops a lot more than I used to. He was usually like my secondary character. Now he's, he's a 1A. He's made it up to 1A level. And the game isn't super difficult because it's about fun. It's not making the most complicated game. Like... You know, you play the Batman games, the Arkham games, those can be difficult. But this game, there's nothing nothing difficult about it for real. It's just all about fun. You do need to balance your teams though. You need to make sure you got some frontline people and some long range people. Because the long range people cannot take hits. And you'll kind of see that as you go through the video. You'll see me getting cooked because I'm trying to be in the background. Because I don't want to be up close. The close is where the danger is. I'm not a I'm not a sit in the front. But the bosses are your standard, you know, boss type characters. They're going to be other mutants. They're going to be different, like military type people, because, you know, humans are awful. So we can't just let the mutants be. We got to got to kill them for being mutants. That's always fun. Right. And as you progress, you find different collectibles. There's comic books. There is danger room. This and the danger room was really cool because not only can you train like your basic abilities, like tutorials, but then you can find special danger discs danger room disc they give you things like different outfits uh different equipment that are special to your particular characters so it's a way for you to get even more unlockables and i thought that was really cool because a lot of times when it comes to x-man content you know you always hear about the danger room but you could never really do a lot with it and 
you see them starting to use it now and you see it even on the Avengers games where they have like this version of a danger room probably some sort of Stark tech but you get you get the idea where it's from I peeped it real quick and this is definitely another one of those super uh, rental games where if you didn't own the game but you rented it for a weekend like I said by yourself or if you had a chance to have a team with you this is some good fun man like I just remember playing this and at no point that we played it where I was like this isn't some of the most fun I've had with a co-op game this is what the X-Men, the Avengers, even DC tried to do their version of this type of game because it was so successful and it's so simple. You know, we doesn't need to be super complicated stories. All we need is our favorite characters doing moves, beating up bad guys, and it's lit, right? So this was a this was a prime example of that. And like I said, there's gonna be way more X-Men games. There's too many good X-Men games to leave off the list, but I wanted to highlight this one because it's a different type of speed, you know, less platforming. Even though there is some versions of platforming in it, which you could tackle multiple different ways, right? You got characters that fly, but you got people like Iceman who can make the ice bridge and who can do the ice surfing. So it's, you know, it's play your way type of thing. You can almost beat every stage with every character. I think there are some restrictions, like some people do need to be able to make the ice bridge or fly. But other than that, you can pretty much do what you want to do. And I thought that was really cool. You can play it with your team your way. Now, I know that you got some stories about this game. I know y'all have played this game, so I like to hear... Who are your favorite X-Men and why, right? Who was your favorite team? Who did you synergize? You figured out worked the best. That's the stuff I want to hear from y'all. And as always, hope you enjoyed this video. Appreciate you taking our time to check it out. Y'all have fun. Be safe. <laughs>